After getting vaccinated, people had a pretty good idea of what to expect. The CDC warned the public about headaches, fevers, and muscle aches, but some people started noticing something different. I was texting with another friend who had been um, vaccinated on the same day as me. But a couple of days later, we both were complaining about period symptoms um, that were unusual for us. And then I reached out to Kate just to ask if anybody had talked to her. It was interesting. It piqued my curiosity for a moment there. And I actually also had um, pretty significant period symptoms. And I decided to take to Twitter. And that was where I was really surprised how many people said, you know, until you said that, I hadn't made the connection between the vaccine and the fact that I had a really rough period this time. Some people wrote in saying they were having a period even though they'd already started menopause. Others said their period wasn't due for weeks, but came days after the shot. And a number of trans folks said that despite being on testosterone, they had period symptoms. And it became very clear very quickly that um, this was an emerging issue, that it was understudied, that vaccine trials had not thought to explore it at all. And if anyone was going to pay attention, it was going to be us. Clancy and Lee study biological anthropology through a feminist lens, which makes their work pretty unusual in clinical research at large. We have not historically studied menstruating people because menstruating people are also people who could get pregnant a lot of the time. And it is now that girls start to menstruate. Menstruation? As a result, we have not really explored the massive immune effects that could exert effects on that system, um, which again came from a sort of a paternalistic protection uh, instinct. Protecting people with ovaries stems back to 1977 when the FDA issued guidelines banning most women of, quote, childbearing potential from participating in clinical research studies. At the time, that made sense. A series of medications had been linked to birth defects, so testing out new ones was considered an unnecessary risk. It took nearly two decades for the FDA to reverse that policy, but scientists had gotten used to studying people who didn't have fluctuating hormonal cycles, which bonus made their jobs easier. It's completely unacceptable and it has been accepted practice for decades. How many ideas, like brilliant ideas, that scientists have about things that might contribute to the neurobiological underpinnings, for example, of Alzheimer's disease or autoimmune disease or cancer or anything else that would have worked in women and don't work, doesn't work in men, and it was never even bothered to test on females because it didn't work in males. Some medications haven't been thoroughly tested on everyone. A recent study found that women have bad reactions to drugs almost twice as often as men. And in 90% of cases, side effects like nausea, headaches, and seizures are way worse for women. And drug reactions aren't the only problem. How many times as women do you go to the doctor and they're like, I've never heard of that before. You're like, I'm having this side effect or like, I'm feeling this way. And they're like, wow, that's weird. You know, so it's like they're reading these medical journals and a lot of these doctors, they're trying to do their best for their patients. And I'm sure it's exhausting for them to not have answers for women. And it's always us. We're always the ones who have these things that nobody's heard of before. So people are sometimes left to find information on their own, which can lead them to misinformation. Some parents are asking surrogates not to get vaccinated and one private school banned vaccinated teachers from getting too close to students. We have a teacher here who herself was with a roommate who was fully vaccinated. She's never had a late period in her life. Never, not once. But instead, after being around her roommate, her period was 10 days late and she experienced enormous blood clots. This is her real life experience. Glancy and Lee are now collecting responses for the first formal survey of how the COVID vaccine has affected menstrual cycles, a small step that's already having a real effect. I think a lot of people felt really validated by the fact that uh, there were multiple people sharing their experiences. And I think they were validated by the fact that some scientists were expressly saying, wow, this happened to us and we want to look into it. <laughs> 